Do you hate getting dressed in the winter because you're always freezing and you can't figure out how to have your same authentic style when it's cold outside? Let's talk about that today. I wanna to help. Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome. I'm thrilled that you are here today. Thank you for tuning in. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, maybe you've just stumbled upon my channel. I am a style and mindset coach. And what that means is that I help women create wardrobes they absolutely love wearing. And I do it with a really heavy dose of mindset work. Because what I find is that women can have a closet full of clothing that they actually love, but they don't really love wearing it. They love the pieces in theory, but they don't actually love them once they're on their body. Or they love them on their body, but they don't know how to put them together in order to make a great outfit. And there are often lots of age old limiting beliefs that have been festering around in our brains for decades that are getting in the way. And so we can create this amazing wardrobe, but if we don't take care of clearing out those cobwebs and changing the mindset, your mindset, then there's no way that a great wardrobe is gonna translate into you looking and feeling amazing when you get dressed because there's stuff in the way. So my work as a style coach and a mindset coach is to take you from stuck and overwhelmed and frustrated when it's time to get dressed to a place where you absolutely love putting on your clothing and getting on with your life. Okay, today, I wanna to talk about a topic that is, uh, it's become even more important to me over the last decade than it ever was before. And in the last couple of months, I have had lots of one-on-one -on -one clients and also um, women on Instagram and here on YouTube and on my email list ask me about this topic. So we're gonna talk about winter and we're gonna talk about winter in areas where it gets cold for the winter. Recognizing that what I'm going to coach on today and the idea of getting dressed and looking and feeling amazing in your clothes when it's cold out, a lot of that, a lot of the questions that I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, a lot of the information I'm going to share can also be applied to hot weather. So if you live in the Southern Hemisphere and you are headed into warmer summer temperatures and you're having a hard time getting dressed for that, you can use these same principles. And if you have no trouble getting dressed for summer, which I hear from so many of my clients, you can just tuck this away until it gets to be cold at your house and use this for the winter months. So I have a couple of notes that I'm gonna to refer to as we go. I, I feel really strongly about this because I am someone who grew up really disliking winter. I grew up on the East Coast of the United States and I really didn't love winter. Pennsylvania winter was not fabulous in my opinion. There might be plenty of people who love Pennsylvania winter. I did not. I did not like the sleet and the freezing rain and the endless gray skies that seemed to go on from November until March. I really struggled in the winter. My mental health, though I didn't really understand how to take care of my mental health so well back then, I recognized that I really was not happy in the winter and I was always trying to escape it by way of a vacation to a tropical location where there was lots of sun and palm trees and ocean so that I had something to look forward to in the winter and something to kind of get me through to the point where it would look and feel like spring outside. So I'm gonna back up one second and just say that if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do that in a program called Style Therapy. It is my signature program and it is a complete transformation. It is a program that walks you step-by-step -step through a process that I have used with now hundreds of women to really take you from a place where you're not loving getting dressed through the messy middle where you're not sure why you don't love getting dressed and we begin to uncover why that is and we begin to come up with solutions for how to get you to the other side where you have a wardrobe that works for the life that you live and you love the pieces in it and you love wearing them. So if you're interested in learning more about style therapy, there is a link down below. I do a one hour free consult call as the first part of the process to get rolling with style therapy and we can go from there and see if style therapy is a good fit for you right now. Okay, back to winter. So today I wanna to talk about winter essentials and not specifically the nuts and bolts of what you need in your wardrobe in order to get through the winter and be warm enough. I wanna go a little bit broader and talk about the things that I believe are essential to looking and feeling great in the colder weather. So I could just rattle off a list of must-haves. You must have these things for the winter. These are my winter favorites. And if you have these, you will be warm enough and you will look chic. That is not what I'm going to do today because if you have been here for any amount of time, you know that that is not my style. I am not usually uh, giving you the answer. I am usually giving you some questions to ask yourself and a little bit of guidance on the way to finding the answer for you. 
because as you probably know from any must-have list, it's completely arbitrary. And a must-have list is for who? It's for the person who really wrote the must-have list, dictating what someone else should be wearing, thinking that what's on that list could be helpful to someone who doesn't know where to start. And that's true. It's a good place to poke around if you're really not sure and a must-have list pops up and, and you want to explore what pieces do I have on this must-have list. Just as an example of a must-have list situation that doesn't work for me, a white button-down blouse and a trench coat. They are on a lot of must-have lists. I don't own either. I'm perfectly happy not owning either. Took me a little bit of time to get there because I kept thinking I needed them because they were on every must-have list, but that isn't actually true. So with regards to winter essentials, I am not going to tell you you need four turtlenecks of these colors and four jackets of these colors and this kind of, um, you know, long sleeve t-shirt and these socks. I'm going to get into the pieces a little bit, but I'm going to start with some other things that I believe are essential if you want to look and feel amazing in your clothing in the winter. So I'm going to go through four things, the four essential things that I believe you need in order to look and feel fabulous this winter. The first one is understanding, or we could also call it awareness. If you don't have any kind of deeper awareness or understanding, even a shallow awareness and understanding of what's going on with you in the winter, it's hard to solve a problem you haven't actually identified. So I would start by asking yourself, what do you dislike about winter? If you're one of the people who really struggle with looking and feeling authentic and amazing and like you look put together and you're really excited about your clothing during the colder months, the first step in solving that issue is to get really clear on what's going wrong. Why don't you love getting dressed in the winter? What is the problem with it? Because once you have awareness around what the actual problem is, it's then that you can begin to look for solutions and begin to look at what parts of this problem might just be mindset issues. They might just be thoughts that you have now turned into beliefs by thinking those thoughts on repeat because a belief is just a thought we keep thinking. So if you have been thinking a thought about winter since you were a child, much like I did, I lived in Ohio and Pennsylvania for most of my life until a little over a decade ago when I moved to the West. When I lived on the East Coast, I dreaded winter and I was not a very happy person after the holidays were over because I really just didn't love being cold. I didn't love the gray sky. I didn't love the damp air. It just wasn't fun for me to get dressed. It wasn't really fun for me to be living my life because I was always just waiting for that period to be over so that I could get to spring and summer and fall and then be dreading the winter again. So it's only in understanding what really is bothering you about the winter and what is causing the problem. Then you can begin to solve that. So ask yourself, why don't I love getting dressed in the winter? Because some women I find, some clients that I work with, they don't really dislike winter. Like I, I fundamentally felt like I disliked winter. It wasn't that I didn't have enough clothes to stay warm. I probably didn't have the right clothes to stay warm and look like myself authentically. And I have a little story about a pink coat in a few minutes. But I really think that a lot of women don't mind the winter. They just don't have the pieces they need. And then there are also women who really don't like the winter and don't have the pieces they need. And there are other women who have plenty of clothing and just don't like the winter. If you're in that category that you have what you need and you could look amazing and do look amazing in the winter, but you're really just miserable, then it's time to maybe contemplate a life change so that you can live somewhere where winter is more appealing. And I say that as someone who has now moved twice, unexpectedly really, and it has changed the game for me. I didn't think that I would ever just kind of uproot my life and relocate to somewhere else. Yet moving from Pennsylvania to Colorado a little over 10 years ago, absolutely changed how I feel about winter because blue sky for me is an essential for winter for me to feel good. And once I took myself out of a gray situation, largely gray situation on the East Coast and moved to a place where it was sunny over 300 days a year, regardless of what I was wearing, winter was more enjoyable. So if winter really truly is the problem and where you live just does not make you happy, I urge you to look a little bit into that and see if there's a way that you can make a different choice, even if it's just for the month or two that is really the most difficult for you, so that you can just be overall, you know, generally happier in your surroundings if winter isn't your season. Okay, so back to the awareness and the understanding. 
Identify what you don't love about winter. For me, it was the gray and it was the cold and the damp and the shorter days and feeling like I never wanted to go anywhere in the evening because in the summer, I'm happy to go out in the evening because it's going to be late till 930. In the winter, it's dark by 430 and then I don't feel like running any errands or doing anything because it's so dark and so cold and I'm just not interested. So identify where are the problems with regards to actually winter. Forget the wardrobe. What is it about winter that really irks you. It really has you thinking there's no way that I can love getting dressed in the winter because I just fundamentally don't like winter. What are those things? And then ask yourself, what would it take for you to make friends with winter? What would it take for you to embrace winter? And also what would be the harm in embracing or befriending winter? Because I think sometimes when there's resistance, for me there was a lot of resistance to winter, I think sometimes when there's resistance, we dig our heels in and we are just not interested. No matter what, I am never going to like winter. But what if you entertain the idea that you could like winter? It, it is a season. It does pass. What if you entertain the idea that there could possibly be a way that you could embrace winter and become even slightly better acquainted with it if friendship seems too, you know, too far off? what would what would the harm be in that other than having to let down your resistance and kind of accept the fact that well wait a minute I actually guess I could like winter a little more than I have been liking it you know what what might that look like just get curious gain some awareness by asking yourself the questions of what do I really dislike about winter what would happen if I befriended it is it possible that I could embrace this season and if so what would that look like so the second essential piece to looking and feeling great in the winter is your mindset and I say that because I really disliked living on the East Coast because I really disliked winter. Or I should say, I really disliked winter on the East Coast. Once I moved to Boulder and I had sun most of the winter and the snow was light and fluffy, it was much easier for me to take. I now realize that I could have been changing my thoughts and my feelings about winter prior to even moving to Boulder. And I did that a little bit, but I didn't honestly do it as much as I could imagine doing it now if I were in that situation with the tools I have. So even if you like warm weather better, even if summer is your happy time, what can you do to romanticize winter a little bit? What thoughts could you change so that your story and your dialogue are a little bit different headed into this winter? If you look to the folks in Denmark, the Danes know how to do winter. They have this beautiful sense of hygge and Within that, they have sparkly lights and they have warm drinks and they have beautiful blankets and really soft fabrics and they have learned to embrace what is really a very dark, cold, could be depressing time of year in Denmark. They embrace it. All of those Scandinavian countries, they get very little sunlight through the winter and it is cold and it is damp and it is wet and snowy and they, they embrace winter. They are happy during the winter as a, as, a, as a stereotype. Obviously, that is not everyone. But I believe that part of the reason is that they have turned it into this thing that is cozy and they're entertaining friends and they're hanging out, even though it means that they have to leave their house after dark. They've embraced the idea that if I romanticize this a little bit, if I light some twinkly lights and if I get myself a beautiful new blanket, I can enjoy my time during this season that is a little bit tough on me because it doesn't have as much sunshine or as much daylight or as much dry air and as warm temperatures as I would like, I can learn how to embrace it exactly as it is and, and romanticize it a bit and do the things that would make it a little easier to take before I even get to my closet. And within the mindset piece, I believe that it's essential to decide you're going to look and feel amazing during the winter. I'm not going to go so far as to say you need to decide that you're going to love winter because I don't think I still love winter. However, I did decide that I was going to have the clothing, the pieces that I needed and the mindset that I needed in order to actually enjoy winter. And so that really goes a long way once you have made the decision. And I have a video about decision and style and I will link it here. Once you make the decision to love winter with regards to getting dressed, decide that you are going to get dressed and look and feel amazing this winter and you're going to do what it takes. And recognize within the mindset piece that most likely the thoughts that you're thinking on repeat, those beliefs that you have held, limiting beliefs, if they're not allowing you to enjoy getting dressed in the winter, can be changed. As much as it is difficult to understand that when your brain is 
heels dug in and really resisting a new thought or a new idea, it is completely possible that you would embrace winter. Imagine yourself falling in love in the winter, in the middle of the darkest, coldest, dreariest time of year where you live. Imagine yourself falling in love during that time. It's going to change the game, but nothing has actually changed with regards to the weather. All that's changed is your mindset because your mindset is open to this idea of romance and, and dreaminess and, and spending this time cozied up with another person. So if that can, ch the circumstance hasn't changed, the winter is still dreary and dark and cold, but your mindset has changed because now you have something that you're focusing on that is making you feel light and happy and warm. And so just that alone shows how much the mindset has to do with it because if we can change our thoughts and feel differently, which we can, that's how this beautiful way that the human brain works, if you can change your thoughts and as a result have your feelings change, then you can take different action and create different results. So in this case of the winter mindset being negative and like you just can't look and feel amazing in the winter because it's winter, there are other thoughts available. And those thoughts could be, I can make the most out of this season. This season is short or maybe it's long, but it's temporary. The weather is going to get nicer. What can I do to begin to reframe winter so that I can actually enjoy it? Because if you live somewhere where winter is long or short, but it's cold and you don't love it, think how much time over the course of your lifetime you are wasting really disliking an entire season. So what can you do to reframe the winter in general and winter with regards to style and choose different thoughts so that winter isn't so dreadful. The third thing I think is essential to looking and feeling amazing in the winter is inspiration. Find some inspiration, seek out inspiration with regards to how to do winter well when it comes to getting dressed because there are cities and towns and countries and women who are getting dressed in the winter and nailing it. They're looking fantastic. So go poke around on Pinterest or on Instagram, or if you live near a ski town, go to the ski town or watch a movie. The holiday always comes to mind because Cameron Diaz in the holiday does not, I mean, she lives in LA by rights. Winter is probably not her favorite season. And yet she is cozied up in that cabin in Surrey, England, and she looks fantastic. So decide that you're going to be inspired by some women who are doing winter wear well, and whether it's walk through a store and see what Anthropology is offering, see what Nordstrom is offering, see what Target is offering. Look at ways that retailers and influencers are doing winter well and are embracing and celebrating how we wear our clothing in the winter so that we are warm enough, but we still look and feel amazing. Seek out that inspiration. Think of a friend who always looks fantastic in the winter and pay attention to what's happening with her outfit. Does she always have on a great scarf and hat that coordinate and you don't have that? Pay attention to where this inspiration can come from. Buy yourself a magazine. Take a trip if that's in your budget. Go to a ski town. I remember in college, I went to Lake Placid. It was the first time I had really ever been in a town that celebrated winter. I was blown away by how magical it was because the town was ready for winter. It wasn't that the roads were never clear and it was always icy. They, they knew exactly what to do with the snow and everyone was prepared. And so find yourself a ski town, whether you're going you know, virtually by way of the internet or whether you are actually going to Aspen or to Vail or to Park City. If you're coming to Park City, let me know. Um, go to a ski town or, or visit online a ski town by way of, as I said, Instagram or Pinterest and see what women are wearing. That doesn't mean the most contrived ski outfit that's off the charts, you know, over the top, but just get inspired. Are they all wearing a certain thing that, well, if I had that furry hat, I might actually love getting dressed and going to pick up my kids or going to do the grocery shopping. Find inspiration, seek out inspiration from women who are actually embracing winter where it's cold and are looking and feeling amazing while they're doing it. It goes a long way to get yourself jazzed about doing something that you don't traditionally love. So if you can make winter more fun by being inspired by the pieces that you're going to put together and put on your body, it's likely that you could start to fall in love with winter or at least befriend it a little bit. And with the inspiration piece, it's okay to fantasize a little bit here. As I mentioned, Cameron Diaz in the holiday, it's okay to think a little bit beyond what you're actually comfortable with or what your actual reality is. What does your very best wintertime self wear? Like what, think that, far, you know, think a little bit farther out of your norm so that you are expanding the options because you've been stuck likely in this space of cold weather, 
I hate it. I hate how I look and feel in my clothes during the winter. If you can expand your option to, if I loved winter, if I was celebrating winter, what does that version of me wear? Does she only wear cashmere? Does she only wear turtlenecks? Does she have a dozen scarves that she loves to wrap around each outfit? Fantasize a little bit. This is an area where I believe it's okay to get swept up in this idea of if you lived in Switzerland, in the Alps, in this beautiful cottage, and, and your life was you know romanticized to the nth degree, what what does that version of you wear? How does that version of you show up? And play with that a little bit. Be inspired by that. And then the fourth thing that is essential, because I'm going to get back to the actual pieces, the fourth thing that is essential to looking and feeling amazing in the winter is inventory. So you do need to pay attention to what is actually in your closet and making sure that those pieces serve you for the climate that you live in. So if you only love summer dresses and you have lots of those and you've been trying to wear those with maybe some tights and you know trying to put on socks with your regular shoes that you wear in the summer and you have only cotton sweaters and you don't really have a jacket because you don't like winter, and I say that because for a long time I didn't really have a coat or a jacket that I loved because I refused to buy one because it kind of felt like I was selling out and giving in to the fact that I hate winter. I didn't want to invest money in something that I wore in a season that I didn't like. Thankfully, I have changed that and I've thrifted a lot of amazing jackets. And so I have a, a good collection of jackets and it has changed the game for me because it's more fun to get dressed. So if you're someone who is holding on to a different season and those pieces in your mind and in your heart and those pieces don't translate into colder weather, you start there and you look at the inventory that is in your closet and you get clear on, is there any way that this inventory is going to work for actually getting dressed and looking and feeling amazing when it's cold? And so before I talk about the actual clothing, I'm just going to mention a couple things that fall under that kind of broader American hygge sense. A happy light. A light that you can, you know, plug in that is going to give you that boost of, you know, the sun's vibes. They sell them on Amazon. We have Henry, my son Henry has one that I purchased for him for under 30 bucks. I just saw that our library here um, allows you to check them out. They have these happy lights that you can, you know, reserve and check out like a book. You could check in with your library and see if they do that. I thought that was a super cool thing. My point is that they're available without a huge expense. And they do, you know, scientifically, they do say that it makes a difference if you can sit in front of these lights. I have clients in Vermont and in Chicago who own these lights and use them pretty regularly and note, you know, a difference. I now live in Utah. I lived in Boulder for 10 years, so I had lots of sunshine. I have lots of sunshine still. So I haven't found that that has been vital for me. If it were still very gray where I lived, I would absolutely have invested in one by now. So something like a happy light, just so that you are, um, and even twinkly lights, if you don't feel like you need a happy, happy light, but that evening time and after the holidays when all the decorations come down, just makes you kind of miserable. Whether it's automatic candles that turn on as it gets to be dusk, whether it's twinkle lights that are set up on a timer, the LED kind of wired lights that are really delicate and pretty not, I mean, Christmas lights are great too, you know, like the traditional strand of lights are great too, but if you want something that feels a little more sophisticated and a little more stylized, there are lots of copper wire, silver wire, gold wire, little tiny LED lights that are usually pretty inexpensive. You can kind of get them everywhere from Target and Walmart, you know, through Amazon and all of that, uh, that you could plug in and put on an inexpensive timer and have some sparkle happen it as your house gets dark in the evening. I find for me, that's one of the things I brought with us from Denver when from Colorado when we moved, were some twinkle lights that are now strung around the headboard of our bed because I like when I walk in my bedroom in the evening and the lights are twinkling. It makes it feel less heavy and dark and miserable. In addition, you could do something like a towel warmer or even a space heater, but I find that Europeans and um, Scandinavians have this right with regards to this idea of either built into the home attached to the radiator or just a freestanding towel bar, towel warmer. It's really a, an amazing thing. Again, Brookstone carries these at kind of a higher price point and Amazon has lots of options also so that when you get out of the shower, you have a warm towel. At the very least, you can tumble the towel in the towel. Blah, 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 blah. At the very least, you could tumble your towel in the dryer. That's kind of a tongue twister. You could tumble your towel in the dryer prior to getting in the shower and just kind of fold it up. I find that if I do that when I get out of the shower, there's still lots of warmth tucked in the towel. 
pay attention to the inventory that is needed in order to, before you even get dressed, actually make winter enjoyable for you. It could be candles, it could be sparkly lights, it could be warm towels. It could be really great lotion. Certainly in the winter with the heat on, our skin tends to be drier. And if our skin is always kind of itchy and doesn't feel moisturized and lovely, that can be a pain, physically a pain, and it can also just make us not feel fabulous about ourselves. Get yourself some great lotion in a pretty bottle or decant really inexpensive lotion into a pretty bottle so that part of the ritual of winter, of that moisturizing your skin during the winter is actually enjoyable and allows you to kind of romanticize the season that you haven't been so crazy about and that um, it, it makes it more special and it turns the whole process into a little bit of a deeper self-love practice, which I know is super, you know, kind of woo and way overused. But in the winter, in a season where you don't love the season, love yourself a little more by way of some pretty lotion, the candles, the blankets, the um, towel warmer, like whatever the things are beyond clothing that can make you fall in love and embrace the season. Okay, now on to actual clothing. And this is pretty basic. There are, I'm sure tens of thousands of YouTube channels and Pinterest boards designed to winter essentials. So I'm not going to um, go too deeply into this, but I want to just make sure that you're not overlooking the obvious because sometimes I work with clients and especially right now, I'm gonna start at the feet, especially right now that socks, fun socks are having a moment. I work with clients who have no socks or the socks that they have are kind of six, seven, 10 years old. They're, they don't love them. They don't even fit their foot that well. They don't fit inside their shoes that well. You know, they're not that comfortable with their shoes, too thick or too thin. They don't keep their feet warm, but they haven't even considered investing in a few new pairs of socks that would actually make it more fun to get dressed. And the little peak of fun sock, which again is super on trend right now, is also just adds a little bit of whimsy to a season that maybe we didn't always love. So with regards to the actual pieces, the essential inventory to have in your closet to get dressed for winter, start on the body, start at the base layer, whether it's a camisole, whether it's silk or wool or an acrylic, you know, a man-made fiber um, or cotton, start with the base layer. How cold are you really? Do you need long underwear? Do you need an undergarment first before you put your blouse on, before you put your turtleneck on? How much warmth do you actually require? And certainly it'll depend on whether you're staying home for the day, whether you're going to work, whether you're gonna be outside, but pay attention to, do you even have those? Wow, I would be so much warmer if I had a couple camisoles that would go under my shirts, but I don't have any. Or I have one, but it's really clingy and thick and it doesn't lay nicely and it just kind of bugs me. Pay attention to what's missing from your inventory because if you have the pieces you need, and I am not talking about going to buy an entire brand new winter wardrobe. I'm talking about looking at where are the gaps, where are the places that you get stuck when you're trying to look and feel amazing when you get dressed in the winter. And if that's long underwear, if it's different socks, if it's thicker pants, like you have these great trousers for summer and you're trying to keep wearing them, you either need a pair of tights or long johns under them maybe, or you need a pair of pants that are wool and lined or um, you know, a man-made fabric, a rayon and lined so that your body can physically be warm enough because then you can play around with the idea of actually enjoying being in the winter you know, climate. Outerwear, super, super important with regards to the inventory. As I said a few minutes ago, I resisted having a winter coat I liked for many, many years because I just couldn't really wrap my head around the idea of spending money on something for a season I basically hated. And yet once I got a winter coat that I loved, it was game changing. I felt fabulous when I put that coat on. Actually, it didn't even matter what I had on underneath. Put that coat on, I felt like I was actually winning at winter. So make sure that you have outerwear that actually works for your season. If you live where it's cold and wet and always damp, make sure that whatever you have on is thick enough that it's going to insulate and warm you and also is water repellent so that you're not being saturated if you try to go from your car into the grocery store and it's sleeting or freezing rain. And the same is true of if you live in a drier climate, what kind of coat do you need? You probably don't need something that's super heavy duty, you know, rain resistant or sleet resistant, but you might need something that's wind resistant, or you might need something, you might be able to get away with something that's just a cloth coat that's gonna add a little bit of an extra layer. Whatever those pieces are, make sure you have all the components so that from toe to head, you can get dressed in pieces that you actually like that it's not, oh, well, I have this one hat from you know seven years ago because I really hate winter, and so this is the only hat I have. And when you put it on, it's way too much static and you don't like how your hair looks with it and it's not a great color for you. Get a hat that you love, that works with your coat, that lights you up, that makes you feel like your authentic best self 
so that winter can actually be a season just like any other where you're getting dressed and looking and feeling amazing because you have the right pieces. One more thing I'll say about inventory has to do with color. I find that with a lot of my clients, oftentimes their winter clothing is very drab, that they allow kind of the season, you know, in the summer, it's sunny and it's warm largely and the plants are lush and there are flowers blooming and we tend to have our clothing kind of mirror that. So the clothing tends to be a little brighter and a little more colorful, maybe a little more patterned. It kind of mirrors what's happening in nature. And the same seems to be true in a lot of my clients' closets where in the winter, what's happening in their winter clothing is that kind of drab, dark, heavy. It's not, it doesn't feel fabulous. It might not feel authentic for them, but it's kind of what they've just landed on. They've kind of resigned themselves to the fact that, well, it's winter, so I'm gonna wear gray and black. So I would urge you to consider what colors do you actually love? What would, what does, go back to that inspiration, you know, from a little while ago where you've decided what your, you know, Switzerland self would wear or what your Aspen or Park City self would wear and get really clear on what colors are in her wardrobe. When I'm that version of me, or if I pretend I'm that version of me right now, what colors does she wear? Does she wear red all winter long because she really feels fabulous in red, but it felt too bright because I hate the season? Get yourself some red sweaters, get yourself some red socks. If you feel more drawn to icy, pale, winter whites, I have had probably four conversations with clients in the last week about not being able, you know, we've been doing wardrobe stuff and I've been making outfits with their wardrobe and four different women have commented on the fact, well, those cream or white pants, they're only for summer. They're, they're pretty heavy weight, you know, but I really only wear them in the, in the summer. I would never wear them in the winter. Why not? Why not? All of the things pictured behind me would be beautiful with cream pants or white pants. There is no rule that says after Labor Day, those pants need to go away. And women still are getting stuck on that idea that they can't wear winter white in the winter. It's called winter white for a reason. It doesn't even have to be winter white. It can be the same pants you wore for 4th of July. You put them on with a big chunky sweater and they become winter white. So give yourself permission to change your color palette. Understand that just because the weather outside is drab and the climate is cold, you do not have to dress in a way that is nondescript and, and dark and drab as well. Insert some color into your wardrobe if that's going to make you feel better. Decide on a color palette and only wear the pieces in your wardrobe that are that color. And if you're missing a few pieces, invest in those. Don't buy another black coat if you really just hate black coats. Yes, I understand black coats can be practical. Cars get dirty. You know, they don't show as much dirt quickly as a white coat or a hot pink coat. Allow yourself to celebrate winter however that looks for you. And so if it's investing in a hot pink coat, do it. I remember getting a coat from Land's End. It was a um, just a basic puffer jacket, kind of stadium length with a hood with the fur, traditional Land's End. And I almost got black or navy. And then I thought to myself, I want ivory. I want I, the version of me that likes winter. She wears an ivory coat. And so I bought it and yes, it maybe needed to be laundered a few times more and it showed some dirt around the wrist, maybe faster than the black one or the navy one would have. But I loved wearing that coat because I felt like my Cameron Diaz self, even though I hadn't even seen that movie yet. I felt like that version of me who actually loved winter and celebrated it because this ivory coat was bright and light and happy. So when you're looking at your inventory and you're going through, okay, what do I have? Because oftentimes we're lulled into this sense of, I don't really hate winter as we get through the hot, as we get into and, and to the end of the holidays, because there's so much else going on and we might be relying on sparkle or on things we don't wear through January, February, and March to, to buoy us a little and to make us think, oh, I don't hate winter that much. Remember, this is so fun and there are some sparkles and some, you know, some sequins and whatever. But once we get to January 1st, oftentimes it's sort of like, okay, now I'm just going to wear gray and black for the rest of the year until it's warm enough to actually put on something that's springy. Don't do that to yourself. If winter is tough for you and you feel like you can't look and feel amazing and like yourself in your winter clothes, get curious, investigate what's going on, look at your mindset, find inspiration, and then check your inventory and make sure that you have what you need in your wardrobe in order to actually look and feel incredible during the colder weather. It's worth it, I promise. Even if you're not planning to pick up and move to somewhere with more sunshine or somewhere that's tropical where you don't even need to consider winter clothing, if you live in a place where winter is cold and you don't love getting dressed during that season, 
I hope that this is helpful. This idea that you can romanticize it, you can fall in love with it. The reasons that you don't love it are largely just happening in your mind. And we know that because there are women who live where it's cold, who love getting dressed in the winter. Not because they have more money, not because they have a different body, not because they're younger, not because um, they have you know a, more access and more creativity with regards to the clothing and how they put it together. They just have decided that they love winter for whatever reason. So that decision is available to you too. I would love to hear whether or not you love winter. Do you find that cold weather is difficult, more difficult to get dressed for than spring and summer and fall? And I would love to know which of these tips seems like the one that'll be the easiest for you and which one will be the hardest. I look forward to your comments. I always love reading what this brings up for you. Like when I share on a topic like this, I love hearing what comes up for you on the other side. That's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for tuning in. And at some point, um, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago, I started to do clothing swaps with some friends. Uh, all of us had little kids and we were all kind of bored with our wardrobes, but there wasn't a huge budget to be continually shopping for new things. And so we would get together and have some snacks and some wine and we would all of everyone would bring, you know, 10 or 15 items that we could swap. There was no money exchanged. It was just, you know, try on the clothes. We set up some mirrors. We displayed everything like a little boutique in someone's living room. It was actually just delightful fun. And one of the items that I scored at such a swap was a hot pink, like perfect hot pink wool, um, like a Paddington bear coat, for lack of a better word. It was long and it had the great leather toggles and it had a hood and it was very much that traditional Paddington Bear shape, and it was hot pink, and it was Isaac Mizrahi for Target. It was one of the first collabs that Target did with other designers, and my friend Kristen had this coat, and it was fabulous, and she was ready to let it go, and I, you know, it was one of the things I got from the swap, and that coat lit me up. I had no idea how much a hot pink coat could make a difference for me when I was schlepping my kids into preschool and picking them up and schlepping them to the grocery store in these cold, damp, horrible, gray days that I dreaded so much. This pink coat was so cheery and made me so happy to wear. I had no idea that a garment could actually make me like winter more. And I look forward to lots more Fridays together. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and a gorgeous week ahead, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.